Hey guys, I'll be sharing with you which 35mm cameras you should consider getting. There are so many different cameras out there. I'm not an expert, but here are some of the few cameras that I currently own. I've attached some photo samples from each camera. If you're just starting out, a disposable camera is the best camera to try out film. It's a simple point and shoot and can buy it from any Photoshop or supermarket. Next, we have the underwater camera, which is also a point and shoot, but the special housing allows you to shoot underwater. It's a decent camera to bring out when you're going to the beach or the swimming pool. However, the bad thing is that you never really know what you're going to get. It's highly unpredictable. I had a couple of these and some of them broke down. Here, we have the Yashica LAF. It's an autofocus compact 35mm film camera. It is a retro style point and shoot which is super easy to use. It has a built in flash and it helps you predetermine the ISO on your film. It also winds and rewinds the film after use. All you need to do is press a button at the bottom. Overall, a reliable camera. This is what is known as an SLR. Here, we have the Canon FTB. I had a 50mm lens on mine and got this as a gift from my dad. This camera is really solid and can be a bit heavy as well. What I really like about this FTB is that it features quick loading which allows you to load the film simply by laying it across the film gate and closing the back. No threading required. There's also a lock function, so you don't accidentally waste a shot. Here, we have the Context RTS. This camera has seen better days. I bought it in the farmer's market when I was overseas and used it for every occasion that I could. It came with a Carl Zeiss lens which is really good and I've stuck to it for all my shoots actually. The RTS has a light meter inside and is able to shoot on auto all you gotta do is frame the shot and press the shutter.
This is a Nikon FA. The Nikon FA camera is a multi-mode automatic camera that was introduced in 1983. The FA also offers aperture and shutter priority auto exposure. It helps against a poor judgement with cybernetic override. If the FA can't find an accurate exposure, it changes either setting to the closest one at which accurate exposure is possible. The issue I faced with the FA was the focusing. Here is the Rolay 35B. What I really like about this camera is that it's super small and easy to carry around. Just slip it into your pocket and you're good to go. The Rolay 35B is a lower spec sister to the highly guarded Rolay 35. The only difference is actually the lens. It's also built in Singapore which is where I'm from. One of the reasons why I bought it actually. It comes with a 40mm lens that is collapsible into its body. Lastly, we have the Leica M2, often referred to as the Rolls Royce of cameras. It is a joy to use, fairly compact, reliable and completely mechanical. It produces wonderful images. A few things to note about the Leica M2 is the loading and loading of film. A knob in place of a crank and loading and unloading revolves a removable spool. It takes some getting used to. Also, the frame counter has to be manually resetted after every roll. I hope this video helps you guys out in choosing which cameras to get. Or you can get them all, like me. <laughs>